brokenness I feel a generation breaking through despair I hear a generation full of faith declare and our song oh, it will be oh, out of the darkness we all your hope in him this morning i trust that that's true let's give him a good hand this morning yes thank you lord let's have a seat just for a minute and i want to give you an update and kind of talk to you about uh, our missions uh project this month and what's going on there so man thanks for being in the house of god this morning yvonne daniel and i haven't met you yet but it's good to have you guys in the house with us this morning good to have everyone here that's here and those who are watching by live stream we welcome you uh, today, James Steph, good to see you folks this morning. God bless you. Good to see you. And uh, Cindy, good to see you this morning. I'm just uh, pointing out a few, and uh, I'll miss somebody, and that'll be all right. It's uh, good to have Sticks Marsh in the house with us today. That's what we're calling Spencer now. He He's going to be taking over for Dad here pretty soon, I think. He his mom said he, uh, he won't stand down there and play with his sticks. He has to come up on stage. And I said, well, duh, that's where the drums are at. <laughs> you know, he knows. He didn't just get born yesterday, uh, maybe 390 days ago. But uh, anyways, welcome you this morning. Hey, uh, this month, missions. I want to let you know, uh, those of you that have already given in faith, believing that we were going to do something wonderful, uh, listen, it is wonderful, because we're going to be um, early this year, and probably for the first time this year, we're going to be uh, ministering 
uh, with an offering to the Freedom Dream Center. Okay, uh, Tony Swillam, pastor of the Freedom Dream Center, pastor of Freedom Christian Center. Uh, they have, uh, they have uh, a ministry that's been going now for 15 years of setting people free from addiction, uh, dependence of all sorts of things, broken lives, and uh, the addicted, uh, the hurting, uh, they have done a marvelous job. And, and we've been on this journey with them now for about 10 years for this church, and I really appreciate our involvement with that as well, too. We have, of course, personal reasons. Uh, you know, some of our family have, uh, have uh, been there and received ministry from the Freedom Dream Center, and uh, my goodness, what a ministry it is. Uh, and so thank you for the last 10 years, church, of uh, joining with the Freedom Dream Center. Uh, it takes a special call, really, uh, to minister to hurting, broken people like that. You know, uh, in a time or two, you know, we have, as a family, we've tried to minister to someone who's addicted. Uh, and, you know, it takes, <laughs> it takes constant uh, being there with them, uh, being a support to them, and 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 we know as a family we just didn't seem like we could do enough. But uh, but the Freedom Dream Center, man, they have such an ability. Pastor Tony and his family and the staff there have just always done such a wonderful job of. Well, they're called to it. You know, there's a difference of being called to something and just wanting to do something. How many of you ever felt that? You know, it's like, I'd really like to do that, but it's like, not you, <laughs> you know? It's like, I just, I would want to do that, but, you know, it just doesn't feel like my call. But it takes an unimaginable amount of time to, uh, to rehabilitate and see everyone lives on campus there for a year that's in the program. I don't know about you, but, you know, if I have company come and stay a week, you know, it's like uh, kind of sometimes it's good to see their taillights, you know, and uh, that's the best view you've had in a few days. Now, really, but, but, you know, but when you think about bringing somebody basically and caring for them, was that too honest? I'm so sorry. It wasn't you, Yvonne, when you were staying with us. That was a joy. That was a pleasure. All right. <laughs> I want to think, who stayed with us? <laughs> but... Uh, but you think about bringing somebody basically in and making them a home for a year, but then you compound that, you know, 45 or 50 times. The, the effort that it takes to do that just has to be a gift from God to be able to do that, and they do it really well. And so uh, we usually have the Freedom Dream Center come at Thanksgiving, and hopefully we still will, but um, um, the other day I saw a, a post that, uh, Pastor Tony had had made, and the COVID 19s hit them really hard up there. And of course, uh, when they're taking in people, basically uh, saw Tony say this the other day. A couple of ministries um, had these people; they didn't know what to do with them, so they dropped them at their doorstep and kind of peeled out of the park. Now I don't know if that's what happened, but they dropped them at the doorstep. And so Tony says, "What do we do?" He said, "We take them in." He said, that's what we do. We take people in. And so he took them in. And, of course, there's some underlying health problems there already. And uh, now that uh, several have tested positive uh, in their group for COVID. And so they're quarantining. And, and, and those testing positive, they're quarantining them in one set of dorm situation there. Uh, and they're quarantining right now in their church from holding church services and that was last week. I don't know what they're doing this week. But they're fasting and praying and asking others to join them. They began a 10-day Daniel fast. It was just fruits and vegetables last week. And, uh, and so they also run a couple of businesses or three out of there. They have a, a meat place and a welding place and different things that they're teaching and giving opportunity to their, their students to work at. And so they're doing all these things. And, and of course, this fix everything. And uh, not even being able to be out in the community. So we want to bless them just with a financial gift. So if you're here today and we're not receiving an offering as far as uh, uh, passing the basket today. But the baskets are at the back. And if you'd like to do that or go online, go into Easy Tithe. Many of you already give. You know, you already got it set up where you're giving to missions. And we appreciate that so much. But if the Lord would tug on your heart a little bit, maybe to give a little extra. And we could just send them a good offering. Uh, just They know what they need, folks. Uh, last week they put out an appeal for free fruits and vegetables and for hand sanitizers and different things and it sounded like the community around them surrounded them really well and they have need of those things but I'm sure the financial need is still there and so I just felt like this month 
this was what we were supposed to do. It's kind of funny. Kim and I had been talking about, and we just kind of been checked up, not really making a decision, uh, which usually that decision is made before sometimes a month even comes. And so I believe it was the Lord leading us uh, to, to this need in particular and something that is so close to our hearts. We enjoy seeing people set free, don't we, by the power of God. And so they do a wonderful job in that. So thanks for your kindness and generosity tell you what I'd like to do this right now too I'd like to pray for them right now as a corporate body and and those of you that are watching if you take this time if you would just as an act of faith to stand this morning with us and we're going to pray and I'd also like to see if you have a need that that you just have and that you just like prayer for I'd just like for you to raise your hands as well too today you have a need that you'd like for us to include yes there's there's uh, some yes some need anyone else yeah really in the back there too uh, anyone else today and we're just going to be praying because you may get, get the spirit of the Lord may connect you with a need or somebody's hand that's raised and you may be all week long just going back and you may be thinking of Thelma and you may be saying man I remember Thelma's hand being up I'm just going to stand with her and because she had this need and that's the way the spirit of God does it uh, I had an experience this week where I just boy somebody came to my mind and I just felt like they needed encouragement and man I just uh, fired off a text and what I didn't know that that his wife and I were texting at the very same time at the very time he needed that encouragement he got the text praise the Lord and then got that testimony back that man that gave me such a lift during the day hey don't think that the Lord is not using you you know hey listen because of some of this stuff we're socially distanced and everything but hey prayer prayer bridges the gaps right prayer comes along and says hey I don't care if we got to stand six foot apart in the spirit we're linked up we're hooked up together and so you saw the hands that were raised today and so uh, if we pray uh, you pray for some of those folks that you saw their hands raised up. Let your heart connect with the Freedom Dream Center, with Pastor Tony and the staff up there and the need that they have today. Let your heart be free to connect in that way. Father, we thank you. God, that we have the the amazing opportunity, Lord, to connect with one another and the body of Christ as you have given us resources, Father God. We get to pull those together, Lord, and and we get to send relief where relief is needed, God, and we send relief in in monetary form this week, Lord, or, or towards the end of the week, Father God, we'll send that relief, and God, you know what they need. You know the encouragement that Pastor Tony, his wife, his family, his staff need this morning, Lord, and we pray, first of all, there'd be a wind of encouragement, oh, blow through the Freedom Dream Center. Through the freedom, Christian church, Father God, breathe, breathe, Lord, a fresh air of freedom to them, Lord God. Breathe on them, Holy Spirit, a refreshing wind, refreshing wind, God. Oh, and we pray, Father, that you would meet all their needs according to your riches and glory, Father God. I'm thankful, Father, for the ministry that they do. And Lord, we pray for those in their group that have been affected by COVID. Father, we pray for healing and health, and we speak it in the mighty name of Jesus. It has no right nor authority on them. We plead his blood, his, his stripes upon them, Lord, because with his stripes, oh, hallelujah, they were healed. Hallelujah. And we are healed, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, you saw the hands that were raised. Father said, we have a need. God, and so we link our faith together right now as believers, as family of God, to come and say, Father, you saw each hand. Lord, you saw what each one needs. God, and right now, Father, minister minister father first lord to the person that had their hands raised father they may have had that hand raised for someone else but first minister to them god help them sense and feel and know holy spirit come upon them i know that you're in them but come upon them in such a way that they could just sense your presence knowing that their prayers have been heard by the one who can do something about it. Oh, hallelujah. First, Lord, minister to them. Lord, and then God minister to their need. 
whatever those hands were raised for, Lord, whether it be a physical provision of some kind, God, we call that in, in the name of Jesus. Oh, physical provision, God. Bring it forth, oh God. Lord, if it's a family situation, a relational thing, God, we call upon you, Lord, to heal, to help, and to bring that to health in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, hallelujah. For those, Lord, who may have been watching and said, man, I I wish they could see my hand. Lord, you see their hearts. You see the ones that would have liked to have raised a hand. Lord, I'm thinking about Carolyn Meyer today, Father God, and how she would always say, pray for our unsaved loved ones. And so, Lord God, we, by the Spirit, reach out today and say, draw them into yourself. Pour out your spirit, Father God, upon this land, God. Turn hearts. Lord, God, we pray for workers into the harvest, into your harvest, God. It's your harvest. And so, God, help us remember that we're working in your harvest. Oh, hallelujah. Father, bring, Father God, salvation and healing to our land, God. Oh, we thank you, Father. Meet the needs, Father God, for those who... We're here, maybe didn't raise a hand, but God, you knew their heart, in their heart they, they, they were thinking about it. God, you saw that too. There's nothing hidden from your side, O oh Lord. And so, Lord, you know the, the hidden things of the heart. So, God, I pray today that you'd minister to us, Lord. In our hearts, Father, those hidden things, God, minister by your Spirit. By your Spirit, God. Holy Spirit, come and do the work. Oh, we're so grateful for your presence. Lord, we're grateful that in a moment, Lord, we'll begin to sing. And we'll begin to praise. And God, it'll, our praise, God, I trust, will be developed. And, and it'll spring from our hearts. Gracious hearts of gratitude towards you, O oh Lord. So thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for this time that we have. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Go ahead and be kids. Can you just stand? Let me make one more thing real quick. Uh, we wanted to start a small group in, uh, in August. But man, with the way things are and everybody's kind of scattered, and we're going to go ahead and hold off. But we are going to do a small group on the stream next month, which I'm really excited about it. Ryan and Leonette, wave your hands at everybody. This is Ryan and Leonette Ferguson, if you haven't met them, but they have a, they have an anointing to teach them and to minister about finances. Not, you know, it's different just to teach it, but to minister it under the anointing of God. And so they're going to be taking that small group class to the airwaves. And so this August, we're going to be at nine o'clock from nine to 10. It'll be a little longer than normal. Hey, it's going to be interactive where we can be able to take questions and handle questions. We haven't worked out all the details yet, but we're excited about that and we're glad that they have come to offer themselves in ministry to the body of believers here. And so be thinking about tuning in, you know, and uh, being a part of this. And so guys, thank you for that. We're excited and uh, And we're looking forward to a great time. And we believe that there's going to be, can you say amen to this? There is going to be fruit from this. There is going to be really help and health in finances. And there's going to be spring blessing forth. How how many know we we have the blessings of Abraham? How many know that? Praise the Lord. And so we're, we're, we're looking forward to it. God bless. Let's praise some more. No place I'd rather be There's no place I'd rather be No place I'd rather be
Sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow Lord, now indeed I find Thy power and Thine alone Can change the leper's bone
like that day getting closer and closer of course it is but oh my could it happen today could the eastern sky split and Jesus come back on clouds of glory today who knows who knows when I was a 
young kid, probably everybody's had this happen if their parents served the Lord, but you ever come home from, or you ever at the house and all of a sudden nobody seemed to be around and got to looking for mom and dad and you think the rapture had happened and it happened to anybody besides me. It's like, like you're looking for like the, the holiest person you know, making sure you know, well, if they're still here, then I'm good. But if you can't find anybody, you think, oh no, I've been left behind. <laughs> let's not be left behind, folks. Let's, let's be living with expectation of his return. Hey, listen, it is going to be so good. So good so good no sickness no pain no sorrow oh it's hard for me to really even put myself in that place and imagine that because this is what we're doing here we're having to deal with those things but thank god he gives us a little slice of heaven in our hearts doesn't he it's where we know the holy spirit goes now nah, you'll get it you've got it it's it's a seed planted in your heart you may not be realizing it all now but you will see it you will see it father thank you that we can be expecting your return jesus that you're coming upon clouds of glory ah oh, hallelujah lord what a day what a day what a day what a moment to go from the trials and hurts and pains of this world to a beautiful existence without those troubles and trials, no heartaches, no pain. Oh, God, we're looking forward to it. Father, and as your people, we want to we wanna touch all the people we can with this message of Jesus, you being the living hope and a way to be ready for that day. So we give you thanks for it, Lord. We give you praise. Ask for help. We ask you for help to for our hearts, one, to be an expectation, and two, for us to share that expectation with others. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to be in the house of God this morning. And so we're in a mini-series, and we're on part part 2B this morning, all right? Our mini-series will be part 2B, you know, and uh, I don't know there'll be a C, but uh, anyways, I knew last week there would be a part B of, of the second part of this. We're talking about spiritual freedom, so if you would, turn in your Bibles this morning to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and we'll reread that word that we've been reading for the last several weeks now, and hopefully... I remember the ones I used to send home to my mom. <laughs> Little Jeffrey is progressing. He is not bugging people as much as he used to. He's not fighting as much as he was. And we can barely tolerate him, but he's doing okay. So it was something to that effect, I think. Honestly, I don't think back in my day they gave progress reports. <laughs> the progress report was, if you don't do it, we're going to take you over here to the little room and get acquainted a little bit more, and uh, we, will, we, will, we will see what happens. Are you at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3? It says this in verse 15, if you would, even, but even to this day, when Moses is read... A veil lies on their heart. Notice where the veil is. The veil is on the heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. One turns to the Lord from where? From their heart. Uh, the relationship with the Lord doesn't begin in your mind. It begins in your spirit, man. It begins in your heart. So when one turns to the Lord in the heart, then the veil over the heart is lifted. So you become alive to God through Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord for that. I, uh, I think about that experience often uh, when we were, of course, I had had a touch from the Lord when I was young and when we had decided that it was really too late for us, but maybe our kids could gain something from going to church. I remember uh, giving my heart to the Lord walking across my yard that day and saying, uh, I, I don't want to do this a little bit. I want to do it all the way. And I, I remember before, I was even trying to read Bible stories to my kids 
I was trying to read the Bible. I didn't, I didn't remember where all the stories were, where they were connected, but I'd open it up, and I'd try to read the Bibles to my kid at night, and it was like the most dull, boring stuff. It was awful. <laughs> and I thought, well, this ain't much. <laughs> you know, I just like, was not, that's just being truthful. That's where I was at. But once I gave my heart to the Lord that day, when I flipped the Bible open, man, boom, it came alive. What had happened? The veil had been removed from my heart, you see. And now I had a relationship with God, and the light was coming in. And then I couldn't get enough of the Word. I was just, I was in it constantly. And so that, that's what this is talking about. Now, now uh, when one turns the Lord, the veil is taken away. Verse 17, now the Lord is the Spirit. Let's say that together. One, two, three. Now the Lord is the Spirit. Notice the Holy Spirit is Lord. All right? The Lord is the Spirit. Okay? So the Holy Spirit is Lord in our lives. And where that Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or there's freedom. Where He, where, again, where He is made Lord. The Holy Spirit can be in a place. Remember, we studied that. The Holy Spirit can be uh, there and be ready to perform miracles and be ready to change hearts and change lives. But you see, even in Jesus' ministry, in one place that he couldn't do many things because uh, of their lack of belief, because they were offended at him. So the Spirit of God was there, but the people weren't coming in with an unveiled heart. But when we, with unveiled hearts, and we say, you're Lord in our lives, then listen, there's liberty, there's freedom. We have spiritual freedom. Them, folks. We do have it. And so we see here that uh, where that the Lord is made, if the Spirit of God is made Lord in our lives, there's freedom. Verse 18, but we all with unveiled face. See, this is not talking to the unbeliever. This is talking to the believer. We all, the ones who have had this veil removed, we, with unveiled heart face, when we, 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 we turn to the Lord, when we are unveiled now, uh, face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. So as in a mirror, we become like mirrors and we behold the glory of the Lord with this unveil. See, the veil's been removed. So now, as like a mirror, we begin to receive the glory of God. Listen, and then something happens. Our being transformed. Everybody say transformed. Transformed. We're being transformed into the same image. What image? The image that we're looking at. The image that we're taking in with this unveiled face. We're being transformed into the very image of God. Praise the Lord. That is who we are. That's the freedom that we have. See, we're, we, we saw that once we make Jesus Lord, you know, and, and we want to come out of that cage that the lion was in, you know, and we want to step out and begin operating in freedom. Then with we, with unveiled face, begin to mirror his image. And so every time that we're, we're staring at him and the image that we're mirroring to the world, when we're staring at him, when we're looking at him face to face, listen, is the very image of God. Man, that's wild, isn't it? You say, well, you didn't see my, my life last week. Get back, look in his face. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Look to him, and you will not help but be in this process. Listen to this, though, because sometimes we get down ourselves, and the devil loves to use condemnation to try to hold you down. Say, I know what you did last week. I know how prayerless you were. I know how little you got into your word, and how, how you know, weak that you were last week, because he wants to bring condemnation. But listen to this, what the Word of God goes on to say. It says, Into the same image, what? From glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. What that means, different phases and different levels of glory that you and I are walking to. Praise the Lord. So start staring at him and bearing his image as like a mirror. I'm like a mirror, and I'm free to do this. I'm so free to bear the image of God. Nobody, nothing can keep me from bearing his image as long as I'm staring at his face and he's staring at me and we've got this unveiled thing going back and forth between us. Listen, I'm as free as a bird to bear the image of God. You're as free as you want to be to bear the image of God. Praise the Lord. But you must be born again. Right, you must have that unveiled heart. You must have to receive the him as Lord. And and you can't just go into this thing part way and really expect to be changed from glory to glory. So freedom we know we saw was one thing, we're free to be uh we're we're a free moral agent. 
It's funny how often I talk to my kid, my grandkids about this this last couple of weeks, being a free moral agent. You're free to choose whatever it is that you want to choose. Absolutely free to do that. But you will stand by the consequences of your choices. So when you choose to do the wrong thing, how many know there's consequences there? But I want you to know there's consequences for staring at the face of Jesus and doing his stuff. Amen. You know, because there's a great consequence. We need to believe that, church. I don't know about you, but that's good incentive. I like to have incentive. Amen. Y'all like doing something for nothing? We'll give your paychecks back last week then. You say, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I worked hard for that, you see. see? But, but God is not foolish. He knows how we're wired. He knows that sometimes we need some incentive. And, and I believe that's good. When we, when we follow him, how many, you know, he, he has the freedom then. He is free to pour his blessings upon us. Amen. 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 So from glory to glory, you're a free moral agent. Now, I want to talk to you about scriptural liberty one more time. I've done this for the last two weeks, and I'll do it one more time. Scriptural liberty is permission to go freely within specified limits. Spiritual freedom is, is permission from God to go where he has said that we can go. And he will only want you to go to the good places, right? Right? That's what he wants. He wants you and I to go to where it's, where it's good, where it's beneficial for us because he knows if we use our liberty for self or flesh, then that's going to go to a wrong place. But he knows if we take this liberty we have and we use it for the glory of God to bear his image, then listen, man, he knows we're in a good spot. The old timers used to say, I want to be underneath the spout where the glory comes out. How many of you heard that before? <laughs> that's, that's it. You know, it was the old Pentecostal circles, wasn't it? They want to be underneath the spout where the glory comes out. And that would talk about a lot of times the altars where they would come and they would receive from God. How many think we need altars in our lives? Praise the Lord. Where, where we get into that place. Sometimes it is a place, isn't it? Sometimes it is a place. And you know, we saw that a lot in the Old Testament where people would go to places. Abraham would go to places and he was an altar builder. And if he'd already built an altar there, he would come back and he would be a visitor at the altar. How many know that's a good thing to do, right? Praise the Lord. Getting off here, so let's move on. But um, so today uh, we're going to be talking about in 2B, spiritual freedom is becoming... Dependent upon God and independent of man or this world system. I know that's a long sentence. I should have whacked it down to about three words, but I couldn't find the three. But here's the deal. Spiritual freedom is becoming dependent. Can I say totally dependent upon God? Upon Him only totally dependent upon God, then that makes you independent of this world system and of the need of man's stuff, all right? So let's look at some verses in this way, and we're going to look at a few. So if you would, turn to Psalm, the Psalms and go to the 20th chapter of Psalm. And let's go, let's pick out a verse here out of uh, the 20th chapter and verse Seven, the word of God says this some trust in chariots and some in horses. I had, used to do business with an old German guy, and every time I say the word horse, I think of Robert Rouchet. He was a guy that had a little equipment place at Verona, and he'd go, Horses. That's a 70 horse tractor. <laughs> so, every time, so some trust in horses and others in, in, in horses. <laughs> but, but Robert trusted in horses. Uh, you didn't need to know that, but here we are anyways. <laughs> the verse goes on to say, without Robert, uh, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. And a lot of the translations will say, we will trust in the Lord our God. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. How many know in the day that this was written, they had chariots and they had horses? And I don't think God was opposed to any of those things, do you? 
Why would he have given us horses, <laughs> right? right? So God wasn't opposed to the chariots, and he wasn't opposed to the horses. What he was saying was, if that's where you're putting your trust, everything a chariot can do for you, everything a horse can do for you, that's the extent of the freedom that you'll have in this life. But we will trust in the Lord our God. Amen? Okay, now let's go to Psalm 118. Psalm 118. And verse 8, little side note on Psalm 18.8. Does anybody know what the neat thing about Psalm 118.8 is? It's the exact center of the Bible. Exactly the center. You want to find the center of the Bible, just mark it down today that it's Psalm 118.8 and listen at the wisdom that it has to say. It says, it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. How many know that's a pretty good middle verse? <laughs> if you have to have anything as a middle verse, I guess this one would work, right? So it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And as we talk about these verses, I want you to be thinking about the condition that the world finds itself in today and the things that we're facing today and begin to relate this to your life. It is better to put trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. If your trust is uh, in, in man in this day and hour, how many know you're not going to be completely free? What we're talking about, this is all in relation to spiritual freedom. Psalm 42, 11. You're probably thinking I should have stopped by there first on the way to 118. Psalm 42 and 11 says this. Why are you down, cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Has anybody had that happen to them over the last three and a half, four months? Man, you don't feel nothing if you haven't felt that in the last two. Why are you cast down, O my soul? <laughs> and why are you disquieted within me? That, I believe, has been one of the heart's cry of humanity across the earth the last several months is, why, oh, are you disquieted? Because we've had a, a disquieting set of circumstances happen and we've had some things going on that are that are but but look what the psalmist said it says it says hope in God what's he doing he's talking to his spirit he's talking to his soul he's saying hey listen hope in God why are you disquieted with me he said he said cheer up soul you ever have to take yourself and just shake yourself and say cheer up soul hope in God for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Some of us today need to let God help our countenance. <laughs> when you pull the mask down, what's your face look like? <laughs> He's the help of our countenance, folks. When you go around and you're in a, and you're in a funk, we'll call it that, because funks aren't made to stay there, right? But, but you catch yourself, and if, you know, this is a great verse to pull out for you and say, why are you disquieted with me? Hope in God. Listen, I'll praise him because he's the help of my countenance. I can smile. Why? Because in my reflection of God, I see a smile. I see a smile. You know, it's a bad deal that there are people that can't see God smile. Think about that. One of my favorite shirts that came out for a while was the laughing Jesus, you know. Just rear back laughing. You know, I, I promise you he had a, had a good countenance about him because the little kids wouldn't have come to him if he hadn't. It. Little kids don't go to grumps. <laughs> they go to people that ain't smiling at him, right? He's the hope of my countenance. The help of my countenance. Psalm 121. Let's back over there now. Psalm 121, verse 1. The Word of God says this, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? Notice the question. From Where does my help come from? Verse 2 answers that question. 
My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Okay, if I need help with something and I am going to be truly free in my life, I am going to depend upon the one who made heavens and earth. I mean, you know, there's nothing impossible for God. Nothing impossible for God. So if, I'm, if I want to think about where my help comes from, where my trust needs to be placed, listen, it is trusting in God. It's the one who made everything that has all the resources at his disposal that I might have need of, that you might have need of. We trust in God and depend on him only. See, freedom, true spiritual freedom, will only be realized by depending upon God only. Or totally. So on one hand, freedom is independence, and the other hand, it's total dependence upon God. Total dependence on God equals total freedom from depending upon this world system. When we look to man for our source, we will always wind up disappointed and we'll be in bondage to man for our answers. If you're looking at man for the answers, if your dependence is upon man, you will be in bondage for man's answers. See, this world system right now is trying to meet the needs of man through man's effort and ability. You don't see many news flashes and, and people discussing and people holding up signs that said, God, we need your help. You're the only way out. What you see is people trying to get other people to meet their needs. And what are they looking to? They're looking to the world system. They're looking for man to meet the needs of man. And it'll never happen we, it might pacify for a moment, and, and it'll only pacify a certain group for a little bit of time until that changes and something else comes along because the devil will make sure because he's the God of this world. There is no thought in the world's system of God being our source. Christians, we've got to understand that. There is no thought to the things of this world for man's wisdom is that God is going to bring what we have need. It's always, listen to me, it's always man trying to meet the needs of man. If you want to, you can turn over to Romans 12 too. We'll make a brief stop there, and I'm going to read it out of the Passion Translation, as I did last week, because again, making the point of total dependence upon God gives freedom. Romans 12 too in the Passion says this, Stop imitating the ideals and the opinions of the culture around you. But we want to be relevant. We don't want to look radical. We don't want to look whatever. You feel in the word that would describe that. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture, and may I say this world's standards, this world's system that's around you. There is, it's all happening all around us. But be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. See, that's what happens. This this veil comes off our hearts, and then as we begin to get into the Word and see what God has planned for us, and we see where the freedom lies within those specified limits, then our thinking begins to change. Our thinking is transformed. Guys, it's time to let our thinking be totally transformed and to depend on God and Him only. This will, the last of the verses, this will empower you To discern God's will. What's that mean? You will know how to stay within the specified limits of the greatest freedom that you could ever ever know this side of heaven. And you will live a beautiful life. Can you live a beautiful life in the midst of, of hard times? Amen. Satisfying and perfect in his eyes. See, when we fail to be transformed, we fall back into thinking that man is going to meet our needs. See, your job isn't your source. 
Oh, you're shouting now. Your job isn't your source. God is your source. Your job isn't that. Thank God that he... Now, when I say these next few things, I want you to understand that God uses these streams, uh, these things as streams and avenues to pour into our lives. Can you say amen to that? That doesn't mean you all go out and quit your jobs tomorrow. You will starve. <laughs> your family isn't your source. We may lean on each other as families, but your family isn't your source. If you're depending upon your family, how many know you will? You will come up disappointed at some point. This group or that group isn't your source. There's not a denomination that's your source. Your church family, and I say that with all the respect in the world, is not your source. Again, God using the church body to edify one another, but it's still not our source. How about this? You aren't your source. Oh, my. I have that thing that Abraham had, Sarah had. Man, can I make an Ishmael in a minute? Left to myself. I can make an Ishmael in a second. You know what that stems from? Trying to be your own source. See, see, a lot of times, man, I tell you what, we get into that. We, well, God, God helps those who help themselves, right? <laughs> And it becomes more than that, though. It becomes that I am the source. You're not your own source. You have a lot to say about it, but you're still not your source. One of the things that we must do to walk in spiritual freedom is stop looking to ourselves or someone else for our source. It leads to disappointment, frustration. And that's why our thoughts of source must be from God. We have to be transformed, transfigured, translated, however you want to say it, into a new way of thinking and believing. See, we live in this world for sure. Everybody say amen. We're here. But we for sure aren't home yet. Now, I want to tell you the truth. This is becoming more and more obvious in this hour. We live in the world. But we are not of this world. It's becoming obvious. Listen, if you don't line up with a prevailing thought and expectation of man or the culture, then you will become an outcast. Am I speaking truth? You'll be weird, a radical with worldly people. You know what I'm talking about. Man, if you don't line up with it, culture says you got to run this way. So if you don't run and, and jump and, and fetch and, and sit, and they'll, they'll, it, we don't live in fear, but there'll come a time where you've got to stay grounded to the Word of God and say, this far and this far only. Because you are not my source. God is my source. It doesn't mean that we do that hatefully, just like the three, three Hebrew children said, Oh, king, live forever. We love you, man. You're awesome. You've been a good king to us. We're not going to bow down and do this thing here because, listen, our thinking and our belief system doesn't line up with that. So we cannot say that that's going to be okay. And you can do whatever you want to with us. That'll be fine. You can toss us in jail, you can beat us, you can do whatever, you can throw us in that fire right over there if you want to. One thing about it, when you get done, we will be out of your hands. But our God, but our God, but our God is able. And see, they went into that fire and experienced great freedom because they didn't bow down. 
But listen, you'll, you'll be an outcast to worldly people, but to the heart of God. But to the heart of God and to the heart of God's people who are sensitive to him, you know what you're going to be? You're going to be home. You're going to be family. You're going to be loved. Hallelujah. Praise God, right? We're going to be okay because God is our source. We've got to be very careful in the upcoming days. We have to walk circumspectly, not as fools, but wise. Wise with the expectation that our hope is in God. So your dependence from this world is total dependence on God. Your independence from the world is total dependence upon God. That's the only way it'll work. If you go back and forth, it won't work right. And I believe many are caught in the back and forth. Yet today I want to do this, but this got a little hard as I think I'm stepping back over here. Or I haven't even realized I've stepped back over here because my thinking has never been really transformed to believe that God is my only source. But when God is your only source, you can stand. Stephen stood before a mob. How many know there's a lot of mobs in the Bible? (laughs) The mob crucified Jesus. And didn't say a word, opened not his mouth as a sheep was led to the shear. Jesus stood there and let the mob do whatever the mob did. Praise God for it. I'm glad he didn't call more than 12 legions of angels and blast them out, right? Aren't you? Stephen stood there with the mob. And, they, and the scripture records they saw his face as an angel. Why? Because he was transformed at the moment because he believed that God was his source, that Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life, and the only way to come to the Father. He looked that mob in the eye and said, listen, let me run this down for you. And he got to the part where Jesus is Lord, and they stoned him, and they killed him. And he looked up, and he saw Jesus standing, not sitting, but standing at the right hand of the Father. He said, come on, boy, come on. Because he knew that there was more over on the other side. This is a little bit of life here, folks. We got to start living like that. Like the most of it is there. Like the things that God said he means. And he, and he wants us to walk in them. Can you say amen? See, when he's your only source. If this is true... We won't be so devastated when someone doesn't meet our need or lets us down. We can say, I lost my job. But that's okay because that job wasn't my source. I don't like that it happened. I had hope that I could keep it. But I'm trusting God for another one that's better and more. How many say amen to that? But that's when God's your source. See? If God's not your source, you know what the the response will be? Well, them dirty so-and-sos of all the years that I spent there got really close. Man, I was was drawing top pay, and I was really close to that next promotion. And you know what? They came along, and they wiped that part of the company out, sent all us top dogs packing, you see, because they saved some bucks. And it would just just stand on that, and we'll harp on that, and we'll complain about that, and we'll jump up and down on that. Why? Because you were expecting them to meet your need. See, that's man trying to take care of the needs of man. That's man looking to man for those needs. But if your source is God, you say, you know what? Well, we'll go do something else. Let me just see. Anybody here ever lost a job that you thought was, was like so important and then God get, got you in another place and it was even better? Anybody had that happened to? All over the building and probably Jillian's watching Is the same thing, but were you tempted to be devastated? Probably so. You were tempted to be offended. You were tempted to, but God's freedom gives us healing over that junk. See, if you're still rehearsing that 20 years from now, you have no spiritual freedom. If you can go back and recite what somebody did to you, If really, if it wasn't just a few days ago, you better be concerned. And that may be being generous. Because God's freedom 
says that you can get over stuff like that. Praise the Lord. I'm free to do that. I'm free to get over this stuff. We can say that gal or guy I voted for didn't get in office. I don't like it, but that's okay. I'll pray for the person who got in because I know that they're not the answer to all the problems. God is. Now, I'm going to prepare you. In November, somebody's going to be disappointed. And there's going to be, a, a, there's going to be a, a growl. And that's probably putting it mildly. There's going to be, there's, there, I promise you, no, I'm not going to say it, but there's going to be a growl. Because somebody's going to be disappointed. And you know what? Wherever you land in that, if you want to be free, you say, I don't care. God's my source. I do care. I didn't like it. Yeah, we won't say we don't care. But we say, I don't like it. I believe this should have happened. But you know what? God is our source. We're looking to God, not the political system of man, to get us where we need to go. Government isn't your source. You see the freedom in that? No one person... No system of government, no company has the ability to steal your spiritual freedom in Christ Jesus. That's amazing, isn't it? And it's wonderful. It's a wonderful freedom. that we See, you rise above because they aren't where your hope and trust and faith are anchored. You're anchored in Jesus. Let's turn to the last scripture, Jeremiah chapter 17. Verse 5, I think. It is verse 5. Praise the Lord. I always love it when I get the right one. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. Cursed is the man. Are, are you telling me that pastor that God is cursing people that God does that God curses these people because they trust me no these people curse themselves they go the way of the curse because where is their dependence upon it says cursed is that man who depends and trusts in the flesh or the arm of man and and listen it says whose heart departs from Lord because we don't realize it because it's sneaky sometimes but as we depend upon men more or the things of man and the world system more then our heart departs a little bit from God for he shall be like a shrub in the desert And shall not see when good comes. Think about that. You know, I've known people like that, haven't you? That that was good all around them. And they just couldn't grasp it. You may have been raised like that. You know, there may be things. Sometimes the people that went through the depression were like that. They they had good all the way around them. but, But they had been so affected by something in their life. That they were shriveling up inside and they never could believe that God was their source. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness and a salt land which is not inhabited. Man, that sounds desolate, doesn't it? Doesn't sound like freedom, does it? But now, let's get to the good stuff. Blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Okay, now I want to talk about hope for a minute. Because we need to make sure we have a right understanding of what hope is. See, a lot of us will say, um, well, um, you think that really good thing is going to happen? Boy, I hope so. Right? But, but, it, but scriptural, biblical hope is not way. Hope in scripture, look it up, means expectation. No, that, that, means, that means a little bit more than I just hope it's going to happen. It means that I'm expecting good to happen. Somebody say amen. See, my expectation or my hope is in him. I'm expecting God to do what he said he would do as I live in this blessed freedom within the bounds of what he's given me to live. Praise the Lord. I can expect God to do what he did. Amen. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters. Now, there's a different picture here, which spreads out its root by the river. The root is going way down deep to pull the moisture from that river that God runs through. See, church, to totally depend upon God, we must let our roots go down to the river of the Holy Spirit. 
There's a river, I guess, runs way down deep called the Ruby Doo. Anybody ever heard of it, you know? And they, they drill wells sometimes, and they try to get to the Ruby Doo. I've heard that. I don't know it all, any of all that to be a fact. I've just heard people talking about that. But it's kind of like that when, us, when we let our roots go down deep into the Holy Spirit flow, then, man, we're planted right there. Now, listen what happens. And we'll not fear when the heat comes. Hey, folks, we've had some heat come. We had some heat come into this world, into our lives, and it's affecting us. But why do we not fear? Why? Because we got roots that go way down because God is our source. We're not looking to man for, uh, for all the answers here. Hey, praise God, he uses man. Thank God for that. But we're not looking to him ultimately for the source. But we'll not fear when heat comes. But its leaf will be green. Man, how are you staying so green? How you stand so upbeat? How you stand so okay? How you stand so peaceful? How can you not be so concerned over toilet paper? Because my leaf's green. <laughs> You'll get that later. <laughs> Good Lord. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> uh, where were we? Okay, because <laughs> uh, belief will be great. Hey, listen to this next part. And will not be anxious in the year of drought. I love this verse of Scripture because it speaks of fear and it speaks of anxiety. A lot of times I, b- I believe that we fall in this category. We're not so terribly just shaking with fear, but we're troubled and anxious, which is a form of fear. Because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power, what, and a sound mind. But not fear. Hey, listen, there will be years of drought, but we won't be anxious. Why? Because we're down deep. Nor will we cease from yielding fruit. Hey, listen. The world can do whatever it wants to do. COVID can do what it wants to do. The society can jump and harp and run and jump and the political systems can fight. But guess what? You and I who live in spiritual freedom will still be bearing fruit. You didn't act like you believed that. We will be be bearing fruit. We'll be saying, yep, this is all going on. But we're bearing fruit for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We're still reflecting his glory because we're free to do that no matter in the midst of anything. So that's the picture of spiritual freedom right there. Completely replying on God and God only. Matthew, if you'd come this morning. I wonder if we could see a a meter or, you know, how you get these surveys on a scale of 1 to 10. (laughs) 1 being almost nothing. And 10 being, like, all good. You ever took those surveys or ever seen those, ever run across that sort of thing? I wonder if we were honest with the Holy Spirit right now on our dependence upon God for our freedom. I wonder where that would be at. Would we be running a healthy two? Pride in us, say 10, baby, 10, I'm, I'm there. Oh, my gosh, I want to talk to you after service. Just let you lay hands on me, anoint me with oil. But realistically, we know what we see, don't we? We see it. We love each other. We see each other's lives, but we see that we need to be spiritually free. It always starts with just coming clean with God. The transformation. Saying, Lord, I I know this to be a fact, but am I really living it? I want to say to some, maybe, maybe you're watching this morning or will watch this. You know, if you're rehearsing a hurt from a long time ago or from a while ago, I'm going to tell you, you're not spiritually free. And you're wasting away because you wanted that person to be your source. 
or that company to be your source or whatever it was. And they were, you were so offended and so wounded because you looked to them too much. See, that's what happens when we look to the people or the world system too much. Then we can't receive the freedom to be healed. So let's take care of that first, okay? Let's pray about that first. Father, we thank you. Lord, we're here in the anointing of your spirit. Lord, the spirit is present to heal. So right now, Lord, I, I declare that you are Lord Holy Spirit. You're Lord in this building. You're Lord over this live stream. And when this live stream becomes just a video, you're Lord in the video. Right now, God, I pray for those whose heart, that unveiled heart right now, would know that they've been spiritually bound because their expectation was of man. Hurt and wounded and beat up feeling has been prevalent way too many days. For some, Lord, it's been too many years. God, I pray right now, and we confess this to you. God, you're our source. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Lord, I, I, I trust you in this situation. Lord, I give it to you fully and devote it to you. Lord, the next time that it comes to my mind to rehearse this, I will instead rehearse that you're my source. The next time that I feel threatened by those individuals who have hurt me, I will say, God, you are my source. You are the one who strengthens me. You are the help of my countenance. I do not trust in chariots or horses, but I will trust in the name of the Lord Jesus as my Savior who took stripes, who had his closest friends depart from him and run off. God, so today, Lord, there are people right now making decisions to trust you totally with this old hurt and pain. They're renewing their minds right now to the fact that they don't have to carry this any longer, that those people are not and were not their source. God, I pray for the church body. Father, not only this body that's meeting, this particular branch that's meeting in this building or watching, but Lord, across the world today. Lord, I believe that it's coming down to it that we have to make you our source. Because there will be times, Father, in the future that we will have to know that you're our source to be able to stand like we need to stand and proclaim like we need to proclaim, Lord, and to be free to reflect your glory on this earth. And, Lord, through the Scripture, we know that every time that we do that, you'll meet us. You'll be with us. You'll never leave us nor forsake us. But, Lord, we declare our dependence upon you. We declare our dependence upon you. We declare our independence in Jesus' name from this world system. Lord, we are not of this world. We are not home yet. We're looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. And so today, Father, as we come into agreement, Lord, Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters here. I pray for myself that, God, wherever this scale is, Father God, maybe it's a new level of glory that we'll begin to operate in from glory to glory, from one level of glory to another level of shining. Lord God, I pray that you will set us forward in motion to rise to another glory. Father, that's not bound by dependence upon man and this world system. Would you stand with me now, church? just agree with me today for your home too. Father, I pray for spiritual freedom in the homes of all of our family believers. A new freedom. A new level of freedom. Changing the atmosphere of anxiousness 
in some of our homes. Changing the atmosphere of anger in some of our homes. Fear is causing anger and anxiousness. Lord, is causing lack of peace. And so, Lord, I speak peace to this people who have declared their dependence upon you today. Oh, glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name. Would you praise him with me just for a minute? Glory to the name of Jesus. Oh, we're so thankful that you visit us with such a wonderful word of encouragement today, with such a beautiful way. Father, forgive us, Lord, uh, Lord, and, and help us not to walk in any condemnation, Father God, but step out today, Father, once again in faith, believing you and hope, expecting you, Lord, to perform your word and your works in our lives, expecting signs and wonders and miracles in our midst, God, to prove that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I speak that over our families. Oh, as healing springs forth from this freedom, Lord. Healing of relationships because people have realized that that person is not their source. Oh, they're just a person like them. And, Lord, mercy is given and grace is given and forgiveness is released in Jesus' name in our homes, in our workplaces, God. God, because we're blessed because our trust is in you. Lord, our roots go down to deep. Lord, we proclaim that the roots go down deep and deeper into the flow of the Holy Spirit today. Oh, we praise you for it, Lord. Give you glory. We worship your holy name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, and I pray for any who have never made you Lord and Savior over their lives. Right now, Father God, because they feel that witness of the Holy Spirit upon their heart drawing them, they'd say, Lord Jesus, come and save me. Be Lord of my life. I believe you. I believe in you. And come, wash away my sins. Make me new. Remove the veil from my heart. God, help those to pray that prayer to give their hearts to you. In Jesus' name. God, I believe that that's happening. God, we believe, Father, God, your spirit's going forth. Lord, we're going to leave this place, and we're going to bear fruit because we have the freedom to do so. So, God, we thank you, and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. And all the people of God said this morning, amen, amen. God's good, isn't he? Okay, love on each other as best you can from a distance, and uh, we will see you later on.